how can I add a row number to my query in Microsoft Access? Or even better, how can I add a row number for every category of items I have or rows that I have in my query in Microsoft Access? I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Microsoft Access playlist, and we're gonna take a look at how to add a row number to our query. Now, for those of you who have worked with other database systems, you'll know that there's a row number function that's usually available as a window function in those databases, and Microsoft Access doesn't really have that. However, we are able to simulate a window function using some subqueries in our Access query. Also in today's video, we're checking out the new Monaco SQL editor that is in Access in the very latest release. Many thanks to Isla Dogs on Access uh, for this tip. We're gonna check it out today. Let's get to it. Looking for more cool topics like these? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay guys, this is a fun one today. We are looking at how to do a row number in Microsoft Access in a query. And uh, you can see here I'm using this file and I've got this order table, which uh, we may or may not use. Um, and I've got an order item table here, which is our primary data table. And I've got some columns here. I've got an ID column and I kind of spread out the IDs to simulate being in, in a much bigger table. And we've got our order IDs here. You'll see that there's three different order IDs a bunch of different product IDs and then prices uh, for each order with a quantity uh, which we may use in this episode but we might not. Uh, we might use that in a future episode though and you can see these are the three. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine. Those are our order IDs and uh, we are going to use those in order to do some conditional ranking. Now Access doesn't really have built-in conditional ranking, uh, but we can add a conditional ranking simulation using some fancy SQL here. And so what I'm going to do just to demonstrate here to start off is I'll grab our order item table and uh, just to start, uh, let's grab everything um, just to get started. And so I'll grab the order ID and the price and we'll be using those two for sorting purposes so we are going to uncheck the show box otherwise they'll show up in another column since we chose all of the columns already by using that star there um, and we'll do order ID ascending so that we get our orders in the right order but then we're gonna sort by price descending now Sorting is very, very important for rank queries. So just pay attention to that. How you sort it will be how the ranking will show. So if you sort by price descending, well, then the most expensive will be number one, for example. Okay, so let's see what we got here. So we're going to our um, data sheet view, and now we've got our order IDs in the right order um, so that they are grouped together you can see uh, four five six is all together that we've got one for four hundred thirty five dollars eighty nine and and some other ones and then we've got our one two three order here order ID and that one starts at ninety nine dollars as the most expensive now I'm going to show you guys something amazing that you have not seen on this channel and that is the new SQL browser for Microsoft Access codenamed Monaco apparently and uh, this is what it looks like and it looks very very different from what we saw before with Microsoft Access with that terrible SQL editor that was in there. Um, this has nicely highlighted uh, you know keywords and things like that and it's got some code completion in there as well that you'll see here in a minute and uh, you can also you know select multiple items at the same time by just double clicking and this is a fantastic upgrade to uh, Microsoft Access. It is something that is long overdue. And many thanks to everyone who worked on this and whoever approved this to get, to get put into the product. Um, you're going to help a lot of people. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm creating an alias. Uh, so I'm going to say my 
order item is item one as item one. So that's one reference to our table. And I'm going to do a control H, which gives me find and replace, which is a very nice feature the way that they've implemented it here. And we can go through our query and I'm going to replace the order item references except for, of course, the one in the from clause because we need that one. Uh, but I'm going to make our alias work for the rest of our query there. And so as you can see, now we have select item one dot star. And so I can, I can use the data sheet view and I get the same query that you saw before with all of our columns, you know, ID, order ID, product ID, price and quantity. And that is how an alias works. If you have never seen an alias before, you can, uh, you know, go from my table as some shorter name which is easier to use and you can see there's code completion there too so now if i select item one dot order id i can also pick and choose the other uh, fields that i'd like to see and i can continue to use the item one uh, alias and i can also with the new editor here i can indent those the way that i would like to see them and it will save how i made my query uh, unlike if you use the other editor, sometimes it just slams everything together and recalculates the SQL for you and spits it out into a nice big pile. And so now you can see we've got our fields the way we'd like them, just the order ID, product ID, and price. And we've got our price descending uh, just the way we want. Now we want this additional field that's going to be a row number. And so uh, we can add that to our query by, of course, going back to our design our SQL view I should say and notice that it comes up exactly the way that we put it in there if I double click on our item one alias it gives me all the instances also if I click on a, a field you can see it gets all of the instances of that field okay so let's add our uh, row number column we're gonna do a subquery and that goes inside brackets um, and so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna do uh, select from because I find with SQL it's actually nicer to build your from clause with your joins before you grab your fields uh, because then you'll have some code completion um, like this item 2 that we're adding here so we're adding uh, table order item as item 2 and that item 2 is also an alias so it's an it's another reference to the same table uh, but we're querying it separately and so what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to select from the same table where the order ID equals the order ID. That's our partition by for those of you coming from other database systems. That's going to allow us to restart the numbering inside of each of the categories. In this case, the category is the order ID. And so we want that numbering to restart every time. And then we're going to put an and keyword in there and we're going to do item two dot price is greater than item one dot price and what that'll do is that gives us a query that gives all the records above the one uh, that you're currently on in that instance of the subquery and so that's going to allow us to put a count into our query and the count will actually be the row number um, so there we go. We've got and item two dot price is greater than item one dot price. And of course, we have to add an alias to this as well. So we can call this column line item. So we're going to say this subquery that you see here, this big subquery uh, will resolve into one value. And we're going to call that line item. And so uh, we've got the query that we want there. Uh, we can save that, but we have not put our count in yet. We have to go back and do that. Let's go do that. So let's put our count in there. So let's do count star, and that'll give us the count of all the rows in this query, this subquery. And we'll do a plus one on there, because if there's none, obviously we want that to be row one. And then if there's one row above, then that'll be row two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there we go, select count star plus one from table order item as item two, so another reference, where the order ID equals the order ID of our main query, 
and where the price is greater than the price on on the row that we're on and so that's going to give us the ability to have that conditional ranking and let's go take a look okay so far looks okay there we go we got one two three that's our order id that has uh looks like five rows there and we got one two three four five that's looking pretty good and we got uh, four five six which is uh, one, two, three, four. That has four rows in it. And then uh, seven, eight, nine has six rows in it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that is exactly what we want to see there. Now, as I mentioned before, it all depends on the column you choose and the ascending or descending. So we could have had a date. You can have like a date time field and then rank by that. You can have an ID field and rank by that. You can rank by just about anything you want. And that's how the SQL looks for that particular query. And that's how you can use conditional ranking to get a row number for your query in Microsoft Access. Looking for more resources for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description.